Jones and Company, and today we are pleased to have the Prime Minister of the Commonwealth of the Bahamas as our guest on the program. Uh, Prime Minister, 2014 for some people were, was a difficult year, uh, and you preside over a country that sometimes uh, we seem to be making tremendous progress, and sometimes there are some people who are living in despair. But you describe 2014. You've, you've really hit the nail on this one. 2014 was the beginning of our coming out of the recession in a meaningful way, mm. where for the first time we could see almost light at the end of the tunnel. Um, we knew, for example, that when we won in 2012 that we had to deal with trying to increase the revenue of the country because what had happened was that the the requirement for infrastructural development was outpacing in terms of costs the capacity of the government to meet those those um, expenditure expenditure requirements in sufficient time um, for example um, if you're developing any island in the bahamas and our commitment was to do something unusual in my first term i made a commitment for anchor resorts i knew that the major problem facing our country was the imbalance in our development. And from a macroeconomic point of view, too many people were coming to New Providence, too many people going to Grand Bahama, to Freeport, looking for employment, what the sociologists call this pull to the urban areas. And so I made a commitment that people questioned at times that I had to create economic activity in all of the major islands. I had to have my government pointed in that direction because therein lies the future of our country and orderly development in our country. Now once you make a decision of that kind, then you know that it's going to take time. And so it's going to take time because you have to ensure that the area is seen by people of the world for foreign direct investment. They can know about Meguana, they can know about Acklands, they can know about Bimini. And, and because you want them to see certain things in those islands that would enable them to say we could have a thriving in, a business uh, industry in, in those islands. So we made that commitment, but we knew it would take time. So 2014 was a year of our making a major commitment, what I call a foundational commitment, a platform that we were building that will launch itself in 2015, 2016, and the years behind. We had to commit ourselves, Wendell, to proper and strong governance. We saw all around us in the Caribbean where countries like Barbados, which was always well-run country, suddenly under IMF monitoring, Jamaica under IMF monitoring. We knew, therefore, that we could not go that way. And so we, therefore, had to commit ourselves, one, to raising revenue, and two, to controlling expenditure. Mm -hmm. And in the control of expenditure, we had to commit ourselves to taxation reform. And so this whole idea of what we had to do and whether the FNM agrees or disagrees, it doesn't matter. Anyone who was the government of the Bahamas in, after 2012 was bound to have to do certain things, one of which was um, expenditure and the next one raising revenue. In expenditure, you had to be creative. How do you go about trying to meet infrastructural demand? So we brought about innovations, innovations like public-private partnerships, and we began to talk about that. Mm. And all of a sudden, in Bimini, it manifested itself. So in Bimini, where we had to, to lengthen the runway, where we had to build a new pier, where we had to fix the roads, we had a private developer come along, agree to do all of those things at the expense of the Bahamas government, and that the Bahamas government will offset that expenditure through relaxing the casino um, provisions in terms of taxation. We pay back through offsetting and taxation. So again, Bimini was therefore developing. That same um, innovation will be employed in other places where we need now, we need $30 million for infrastructure in Andros alone. We need 15 million in Acklands. We need on other places in the Bahamas. Um, just to give you an example of what 2014 presented to us. We knew, for example, that we are uh, airports um, were requiring tremendous intervention. And so 28 airports in, in New Providence, I mean, sorry, in the Bahamas, and about 140, $148 million was required 
to fix them and bring them up to date and to have the security and have the human resources deployed in there. And you can't do that all one time. Yeah. But okay. Prime Minister, do you think people are understanding what uh, your government is all about? Are you connecting uh, with the Bahamian people well, in this regard? This, this is what 2014 presented to us. We knew we also had a failed referendum, for example. Right. We, we knew that, that, but nevertheless, events took a, about an about turn in that area where the governor of the central bank brought to our attention this calamitous circumstance that was developing where a new banking order was developing in the country, which would have caused us even more headaches. So we made a commitment that we had to regularize the gaming industry full stop. And even though for 100 years the numbers of business and web shops were out there, we had to regu regulate it and we've done so. We've put the most comprehensive legislation in place. Now that, that took, we took a big hit for that. So people, some people would not understand, but we had to take a big hit because we committed ourselves to running the country in the right way. But there are people who say you've, you've flown in the face of democracy and that you didn't respect the wishes of the people. But in the final analysis, I made the point that where the best interest of the Bahamas conflicts with a commitment and a promise I made, the best interest of the Bahamas will reign supreme. In other words, we will be directed by the best interest of the country. Mm -hmm. I cannot do more than say the governor of the central bank told me that we now have a banking order. We now know, Mr. Mr. Jones, that is running, we were predicating it on 400 million. It's around 600 million dollars and this thing circulating and so we had to do something about it I'm glad we did something about it and I'm sure in the fullness of time people will respect us for the way in which we went about doing it yeah. we had to decide on that yeah. right this is what what the t what was presented to us that became a very difficult subject because people were concerned you were going to lose an election but there are people who believe Prime Minister that your government has not gone far enough your government um, uh, has not uh, enabled Bahamians to be on the same level with uh, foreigners who come well, into the take, Bahamas. Let's, let's take that. Yes. So you, we've come, we came into power with unemployment among young people of around 30%, unemployment around 18% with Bahamians on average. The first thing you had to do was arrest the slide we're in. You might be talking about empowerment for Bahamians, but you know empowerment has to come with resuscitating the economy, getting it better. And so we set about to get the economy better. Um, in my last budget communication, I gave a clear indication that investment opportunities are now presenting themselves throughout the Bahamas, in New Providence, etc., and that we are going to now be able to create the jobs. Unemployment numbers will go down. Um, more and more Bahamians will be employed. More and more Bahamians will have opportunities to go into business. And it's in that context that Bahamians will be empowered and have an opportunity to do well. For example, let's take Bimini. Mm. In Bimini, we now have as many people who want to work can work. People have come from Grand Bahama and New Providence for jobs in Bimini. But the opportunity for entrepreneur, entrepreneurs, for business, um, small businesses now are there for the Biminite. Yeah, but Bimini is a small island, one of the well, smallest let, island, let's, let's islands in the Bahamas. You're dealing with New Providence uh, where, and Grand Bahama, where okay. the vast majority of our population uh, lives. <coughs> okay, let's, let, 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 the point I was making when, when you interrupted me was that we had to fix the economy. Mm -hmm. And one of the ways to fix the economy was to increase revenue. Mm -hmm. And so we decided, for example, that, that we had to work with the business community. And so we gave the business community an opportunity to join us in making a determination of the model that we would use. We gave them all of the freedom that they wanted to arrive at their decision. Ultimately, we came up with the answer that it would be VAT, and we said it would be VAT at 7.5%. I then met with them and said, now, listen, I do not believe philosophically in imposing things on an economy as small as the Bahamas. Therefore, I want to work collaboratively with the business community. And the business community got together with us through the Chamber of Commerce, and they agreed to help us introduce VAT to the country. That's what's happening now. now all of that with a view to increasing the revenue stream. We've also said we've, we've, we're forming with uncollectible parts of real property tax. We've hired an accounting firm, 
an accounting firm to help us collect the revenue. We're modernizing customs. So you can see that in terms of all of the things we're doing, we're, we're automating um, collections in the Road Traffic Authority and Customs Department. So you can see we're making a major effort to get a sound economy going, create more jobs, lay the basis for Bahamians being able to have more business opportunities. But why the point I'm making, yes. though, that I've asked you, the mm -hmm. point I'm making is this. Bahamians, you ask the question of whether they appreciate. I don't think no, and I don't think we have done as an effective a job as we should, because I'm talking to you about Bimini, and you said Bimini is a small island, but Bimini has already given 800 new jobs, with another 200 rooms and the hotel becoming available by mid-January. That's another 200 jobs. Yes. So you, you, you find, therefore, yeah. that Bimini is now setting itself as a model for islands like San Salvador, where construction will start on inc improving the plant in San Salvador. In Cat Island, where construction will start in Cat Island. In, in Exuma, where construction will be going on in the year 2015. So what you're finding is that this anchor approach we've taken to creating economic activity in the different islands, mm -hmm. this is what is healthy about it, will create jobs in those islands, Mr. Jones. And for the first time, people will see the sense of it, where in Bimini, in Grand Bahama, in Abaco, um, where things are happening, in, in Grand Bahama, where memories have started and we're going further in that regard, people will see opportunities for jobs and opportunities for going into business. That's I, what's I, happening. I fully understand uh, your point, uh, Prime Minister, and um, your government should be congratulated for what you are doing in terms of uh, putting jobs in those islands. Uh, however, we have about 40,000 people thereabouts unemployed in the Bahamas. Uh, there are tens of thousands who do not want to leave, leave New Providence. Okay. And there are many who do not want to leave Grand Bahama. Well, let's talk New Providence, let's talk Grand So Bahama. let's talk uh, uh, new, okay. new, new Providence. Okay. And the extent to which, um, uh, first of all, the businessman feels empowered um, in New Providence, in the Bahamas, generally speaking. There are scores of businessmen who uh, talk about the inability of your government to empower them. And this is your opportunity to speak to that. Well, firstly, again, in New Providence, we have Bahama. Bahama will employ around six, 7,000 people. 2,200 new rooms coming on stream, and they should open by May. People are being employed now. Mm. When you have, therefore, such a giant leap in employment, okay, you find then that businesses thrive because those businesses find a way to cater to the people who now have new jobs. Secondly, the Hilton Hotel is being bought by the Chinese company. Construction will start in April in that area, major construction activity. We've agreed with Life at Key. Life at Key will expand into office buildings and cottages and condominiums again in, in 2015, so you expect construction activity there in New Providence. Albany continues to employ hundreds of Bahamians. They are expanding and going ahead, and we've announced the product going on there so you can see it. We've given permission for two or three condominium blocks to take place in the western district of the island. Again, construction activity, economic activity. So this whole aspect of the potential in the jobs will now come into being in 2015, and therefore the economy is going to be healthier. The business persons, right, who are feeling embattled now will, will begin to relax because they're going to feel the cash flow moving around. Whatever businesses they're in, we're going to have a significant jump forward and an impact um, on the, the economy through these new jobs, through people purchasing and being free to do the things they want to do and using their discretionary income. So I expect 2015, um, we are projecting a growth of over 2% in 2015. I expect, therefore, with the American economy now moving in the strong direction upwards, mm -hmm. that the impact's going to be very positive on the country here in New Providence and in Grand Bahama. Just like in Grand Bahama, in Grand Bahama, the memories Group grew the economy by about 37 percent 
moving this new tourism product into the, the Canadian company Sunwing, mm -hmm. taking over the old Reef Hotel, employing people. They have such a, a robust program plan for 2015 that it looks good. Then we, the celebration cruise ship, a new cruise ship was bought, and so you have two cruise ships, the Ballerera and, and the Celebration, bringing people into Grand Bahama. We have a proposal for Grand Bahama, uh, two proposals for Grand Bahama that I'm not going to speak to right now, but they're very active, they're very meaningful, will employ hundreds of, of, of Grand Bahamians. And so I expect in the year 2015 for there to be a jump forward. I also received a communication from Hutchison Wampo, who pointing out to me the need for the government to get involved in making sure the Lucayan Beach Hotel um, is able to pay its way. And we are actively engaged in negotiations with respect to the Lucayan Beach. So, Mr. Jones, one final point. The government showed its flexibility in Grand Bahama, for example, when it imposed certain taxes in the last budget year. Mm -hmm. They protested and they came back to me. In consideration, I said, of my rolling back the taxes, would you expand your involvement in the economy of Grand Bahama? So the container port and MSC shipping agreed to do that, and that's in train now. The shipyards, so the, the, the pharmaceutical companies. So in effect, in being able to be pragmatic and wise in the application of taxation policy, we've been able to trigger off an expansion of the economy in Grand Bahama yeah. that will be felt by Grand Bahama. So, so to those persons who are in New Providence and Grand Bahama, I'm saying to them, that the first thing you should recognize is that a healthy Bahamas, a healthy Bahamas will mean a more meaningful time for you. And what do I mean by healthy Bahamas? We're in Bimini, we're in Abaco, where we have Bakers Bay going along, Winding Bay, Schooner Bay, mm -hmm. these major developments where a new port will be put. Mm -hmm. Abaco is well on its way, right? And Grand Bahama, which I've just described, especially with the new port in the making, Right? Grand, Grand Bahama is well on its way. In Eleuthera, we're negotiating a Four Seasons in Eleuthera, some other developments in Eleuthera, well on its way. Listen to me, yes. in Exuma, yes. right? we're negotiating and finished negotiations for a new hotel golf course in the Keys, um, Williams Key and, and Children's Bay Key, and new homes in Baratari, new developments in Exuma, a new purchase of a Crab Key, new people coming in. Um, just this week, yesterday I told you I was in some sensitive negotiations, and those negotiations will result in a minimum of another 200 rooms going into Exuma, and the people who are going to put them there, I shan't call their names now, are saying that they could move as fast as my government would take to make the decisions to clear the way for them to move. Yeah. So what do you see happening here, my friend, is that the person in New Providence, the businessman in New Providence, the businessman in, in Grand Bahama, will suddenly see a Bahamas that is burgeoning, that is moving in the right direction, where people are being employed, and where they will be able to have the opportunity to sell their Product, I, understand, I understand your enthusiasm, Prime Minister. It's more than enthusiasm. Uh, See, it's more than enthusiasm. Yes. It's now based on approvals given. And this is particularly important to the Bahamas with Cuba opening up. Right? And, and that, you see, when people put their money in the ground, they can't move it. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that you can see, if that you could be wise enough, and let me just tell you about wise enough. We decided that we've gone as a country long enough without a plan. So we articulated a position and went to the College of the Bahamas, which by 2016 will be the University of Bahamas, to make this point because it's meaningful, that we expect a national plan guiding us for the next 25 years to be put in place by mid next year. All of that is good. There are a whole lot of people who uh, complain about the amount of time that it takes for things to happen and you enumerated a number of projects right. and uh, there are many Bahamians who feel encouraged but your government is often criticized for the length of time that it takes to make things happen well a I, quick response a quick response is this that people have to understand my government is also to protect the future of the Bahamas 
90% of these developments, for example, involve environmental safeguards, environmental impact assessments, environmental management plans. They take time. Whenever you are developing an islands like Meguana or Eleuthera or Bimini, environmental matters are very, very important because you owe to future generations of Bahamians the opportunity to see the Bahamas we love and we share. So therefore, that's it. Yes, can we speed up business? We must. For us to be competitive in financial services, for us to be competitive in the investment areas, for us to be able to get Bahamians off the market more involved in business opportunities. We have to be quicker, we have to be more efficient, and it's always work in progress. And that is why um, we have to introduce more technology, automation in things we're doing. We're too slow, and, and that, that is a major concern for us. But part and parcel of the improvements and the innovations we're introducing are all calculated to bring about the results that people are complaining of and that they want. Mm -hmm. They want um, a much more efficient um, form of governance, much more efficient services. Those are what we are promising to give them. That's what we promised to give them. And to people who don't believe it, you know, when I started off and said the government of the Bahamas under the P P Perry Gladstone Christie will move to take 2% of BTC back. Mm. People say, stop from talking nonsense. That can't happen. You know it can't happen. You're being foolish. Well, the result is this. Clearly, we, clearly we had to compromise in the sense that we do not have 51% of the voting rights, but we have 51% of the economic rights. And that is a far different position to what the Ingram government left the Bahamas in. They said it couldn't be done. Christie can't do it. Christie did it. Yes. And the PLP did it. Uh, Prime Minister, uh, since you uh, made the point of uh, BTC, uh, let us talk about energy, uh, the situation at BEC. Right. There are a good number of uh, businessmen, ordinary Bahamians, who are unhappy uh, with BEC um, and unhappy with what the government has done and is doing with BEC. Energy is extremely important for the running of business, for the running of homes. When are we going to see BEC properly functioning and the cost of electricity coming down? Shortly. Let, let me say that yesterday um, I had a meeting with the company that has been recommended to be the manager uh, the new manager of BEC because the government we started off in a request for proposal on BEC being privatized ultimately determined that it should adopt a model similar to what is at the airport um, with Vantage managing the airport and so we chose to go and look for a manager who could give us the innovations the capital injection and therefore cheaper electricity we know we always knew right, that the greatest challenge to this country is the cost of energy, both to domestic, to people, Bahamian people, mm -hmm. and to investors. Yesterday I had a meeting, and the only reason I had the meeting was to satisfy myself on the basis of what was presented to cabinet by the task force. right? Um, and I should satisfy myself, I had a number of cabinet ministers with me, that the people who I were talking to had the capacity to deliver the product. And I knew whilst this was happening that Emera, a Canadian company in Freeport, was introducing lower costs. What are you right now, that it's about Bahamians are unable uh, no. to run BEC. We had this situation with no, BTC, and Leon Williams came back, and he's running BTC. Are you suggesting that the management of BEC no. should not be Bahamian? No, the management might remain Bahamian. That's not the point. The point I'm making is we want somebody who's able to come in and spend hundreds of millions of dollars, if necessary, in putting the kind of plant in place. Let me just say this, that when we came to power, BEC's legacy debt was about $460 million. That's what a cumulative figure. We have to find a way to pay that under government guarantee. One of the reasons why we want, wanted the private sector people involved was to see if we could get them to absorb this debt as a part of the whole in, um, new development of, 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 or the new BEC. 
what we have decided to do up to this point is to negotiate what we call a rate reduction bond, where we're going to take that off the, the debt, that $460 million, and put that into the bill in such a creative way where it, it's a couple cents each electricity bill you have, it will be paid for. But that when we introduce, we hope, right, the new management team, we're doing it bearing in mind that we want to empower Bahamians. We're not stopping that from happening. But we also want to bring in a management team similar to what happened at Linda that would give us the best in efficiencies and in access to capital and knowledge in being able to move forward. That's what we're doing now. Mm -hmm. What we have determined for ourselves, if this is the best formula for BEC, the best formula for the Bahamas. And so that you know it, it has to happen with the Water Corporation and it has to happen with Bahamas Air. It has to happen with ZNS. The country should not be subjected to having to subsidize these areas where the private sector could get involved in it. Ultimately, this whole outcome may be private people running and owning these, these matters. But for the time being, the government of the Bahamas has made a decision specifically with respect to BEC. One, that we will have a new manager and we will have a new manager before the end of January. Two, right, that that new manager would come in and have an immediate reduction of the cost of electricity. All right, that's what we're discussing now. And three, would be able to bring into the islands of the Bahamas um, alternative energy methodology, and that is the solar, the wind, whatever is cost efficient. We believe that the people we're talking about can do that. So in the final analysis, governments have to make decisions about advancing the interests of the people of their country. My government has decided to do it in that fashion. But at the same time, as I spoke to them yesterday, I made it very clear that we want a dignified transition, one in which the interests of Bahamian executives are protected. And so, so the fact of the matter of who's running it, uh, doesn't, we are not moving away from the realization. After all, it, it is us who um, superintended the, the, um, the new managing director of BTC. Um, coming in. So we do understand that, Mr. Williams. We do understand that. And, and in my meeting with the, manager, the general manager of BEC, who were in these meetings with me talking to them, and I assume that he will, in tra transition, move to new management. So, Mr. Jones, the point is this. You, you began by asking a question in almost a negative way, um, as if you did not expect a positive answer from me, but you're going to get a positive answer. Before the end of February, you will be hearing from us and we will be trumpeting, mm. right, what we are doing with this and we are going to be saying it's manifestly in the best interest of this country. And I was talking with a hotelier who talks about spending 180000 a month in terms of electricity bills. This is going to be a significant breakthrough for them. The Minister of Tourism is telling us today of someone writing him from Freeport saying, my electricity bill for the first time has come down to ma manageable proportions. And so we are talking in terms of the cost per kilowatt hour of a significant reduction again in a short period of time. In fact, I told the cabinet today in the meeting that I'm going on the 4th to China. When I return, I will present to them my recommendations with respect to moving forward with BEC. Okay. Uh, Prime Minister, um, I want to talk a little bit about that uh, because uh, I am told that that will also be added to electricity, to the cost of electricity. Um, are you at all concerned that um, we perhaps will be going back into uh, some, some, somewhat of a re recession uh, with the introduction of that? There are many Bahamians who are very anxious about it, and there are businessmen who believe that it will cause some consternation in the economy. What do you say? Firstly, that one has to accept that there will always be the naysayers in our country um, whenever something new. Firstly, that is here because we have to have it here. We thought it was the fairest form of taxation that we could put forward at this time. Secondly, we decided to take into consideration the concern and therefore we reduced it to 7.5% as opposed to what has been recommended and talked about. All right. Thirdly, we decided on the New Zealand model 
we looked very carefully at that and we decided that in exemptions, right, we were not going to be able to, to satisfy the people who are those, the, the, the disadvantaged, the poor in our country. Because even if you rebate food or, right, or electricity, you're exempting a lot of people. So what we decided is this, that as we introduce that, we're introducing a more dynamic social services policy commitment. In the, in, we have a, what we call a cash transfer program, which will result in people having a debit card, being able to collect, and we'll be close monitoring on that, but we are gonna be able to move to ensure that the most disadvantaged in our country are not impacted. We also know, whilst we're doing this, uh, Mr. Jones, that we are going to reduce duty in about a hundred items to do with food, to do with clothing. So, but do you think that will be passed on? Yeah, well, again, the, to good, the consumer? It's, a, it's a good question. And one of the things that I have said to my cabinet is that, and to the minister, um, Shane Gibson, who's responsible for consumer protection, is that I want him to police this. And I want him to police it in a way where we will publish the savings that are to people and that should be reflected in the prices. Now, the difficulty is this. We, we want an all-inclusive kind of arrangement for that in the sense that when you buy, except for the first two months of that when we have a transition, but when you buy of the good, that will be included in the price from the, on the shelf and not you know, have some transaction at the counter. So ultimately, we have to police that in the interest of Bahamians. But in the process, we've decided now to introduce a number of these items, and whether building supplies, um, food items, you know, um, you know, taking off a major percentage, clothing items taking off a major percentage of them, all with the view to ensuring that there is something to pass on to consumers. Almost certainly, it's a set off, meaning that uh -huh. they, you know, with the with the VAT, uh -huh. they'll be able to get it for the same price. So, so the fact of the matter is this: that we have to police that in on their behalf. In the initial stages will help us between now and the budget of uh, May of next year. We're going to watch very carefully um, what we've reduced to determine whether there should be more reductions because ultimately we hope to have a very balanced economy oh. um, moving forward. And so I, I can tell you that um, I brought teams from New Zealand to audit what we're doing. Um, I've had them go through again to look at the process. They're satisfied. They'll come back in um, um, in the middle of next month to look to see how it's going because I want to ensure that, that we protect as best we can the Bahamian public. And when you look at what we're doing, you know, I, I keep, I started off by saying we are intending to be transformative in our governance. Mm -hmm. Mr. Jones, we're taking some big issues and we're taking them head on. Mm -hmm. Prime Minister, I'm, let me um, say that we are going slightly over time on this program today because we don't get you on uh, the program too often. Uh, so and I'm glad you did it. You know, even if yes. you ask me some extra questions and use it as a different program, I'll help you find the sponsor for the program <laughs> because it's important for yes. me to be heard by the Bahamian people. And yes. this is the first time in a very long time yes. that I've ever sat down and spoken to anyone. You know, I mean, I'm going through... We're, we're to, I'm looking at the economy of the Bahamas, mm -hmm. and I'm looking at BAMSI, mm -hmm. I'm looking at Andros. Yes, yes. These okay. are matters of yes. national health insurance. Absolutely. So let's take this break here on our program, and we'll come right back. Mm -hmm.